Oh, I love that song. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you here again for our Sabbath School conversation, our time to review the Sabbath School Bible study. And I hope you had a blessed time already this week with that, and you're in for a real treat today. So I just want to invite you, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and start a watch party right there on Facebook that you're watching now, or if you're on Face on YouTube, make sure and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and text the link to a few people and encourage them to watch. For today, we're talking about how God views things, where we're seeking to have a godly, a God-centered, a biblical worldview, the eyes of the Lord. Uh, that is what we're looking at here today. And so I'm looking forward to hearing your stories, hearing you share. We have a fantastic team here today to share with us. And so I'll bring them in so you can uh, greet them. And uh, this is uh, Marcia here with us today. Welcome, Marcia. Thank you, Pastor. I'm happy to be here. Yes, wonderful. And then we also have uh, Brother Myron Robbins. Welcome, Myron. Good morning. All Happy right. Morning. Very good. And so I just want to uh, I just want to let you know that we're looking forward to hearing from you. We want to hear your, your answer to the questions that we're going to be putting on the screen, all related to our Bible study for this week. And by the way, if you're brand new to us and you're wondering, what is that daily reading that you're talking about? How can I get that daily reading? It's real short, brief reading. You read from the Bible and a commentary, you can find it at sabbathschoolpersonalministries.org and uh, and you can follow along. It has a date and it has, for the day and you can read and it's just uh, a great way to be connected uh, with a fellowship of 25 million people around the world studying the same topic. We'll, we'll, we will be doing that again uh, this coming week. So you're, there's resources for you. And if you would like to be a part of this panel sometime and join us here live, like Marcia and, and Myron are doing today, send us an email to communications at seabrooksda.org and let us know. But today, to set the tone right before we pray, let's just begin with some gratitudes here today. And uh, I'll begin. I'm grateful that I get to be with you. I'm grateful that today it's uh, that we have a youth event at, on our church campus at 8900 Good Luck Road, and it's called uh, Pathfinder Investiture. It will be an outside event. My son, who is a Pathfinder, will be there. Pathfinders is an organization for young people uh, starting at fifth grade. And so, uh, and then we have adventures for uh, children who are younger. So, uh, if you're not in, in Pathfinders yet, uh, you you definitely should uh, consider it. And Brother Myron, um, uh, some people that are watching right now, they may know that you had a major tragedy uh, this week in, in your family. Um, and so if you'd like to share for those who don't know, feel free to share. And we will definitely be, be praying for you and your family. Okay. Um, I lost my son this past Sunday. He was hit by a driver who was believed to be drunk. And it's been a rough week, but since we're on gratitude, let me say this. I am so grateful for my church family. Had it not been for you guys, I may not have made it through this week. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Aaron, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I know I reached out to you and I said, look, I totally understand uh, because we were planning on you being here from some time ago. And you said, Pastor, uh, I need to be on. I need to be on um, because that's how I stay connected to God by sharing and by being of service. So we appreciate you so much and we're glad you're here. And uh, also, my good friend, uh, Marcia, is here. And Marcia, welcome. This is your first time with us on this uh, panel. So share yes. with us. So when I was a child, I used to chuckle when the old folks would say, I'm grateful to be alive and enclosed in my right mind. And as I get older, I see the meaning behind that. So I am grateful to be alive and clothed in my right mind. And I'm grateful for the strength of the Seabrook family and for the love that Brother Byron has felt this week. Mm, 
Yes, you know what? I'm with you on that one. Clothed in, and in my right mind, God. Yes. God is good. That's right. All right. Uh, very good. So, uh, friends, you can share your biggest gratitude. Uh, it's just good for the heart. It prepares our hearts uh, to, to just to live a better day. So share your biggest gratitude so other people may read and, and be encouraged by that. And so, uh, Sister, would you go ahead and open us up with prayer today? Sure. Heavenly Father, we come before you just feeble, feeble mortal beings. We are so grateful to be alive today. We are so grateful for the opportunity to share your word and to share our experiences with you and about you with others. We ask that you'll just bless the audience that listen as you bless us as we speak. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In a special way, we ask for you to just wrap your arms of love and strength around our dear brother and his entire family as they go through this bereavement process. And we claim your blessings today in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, amen. Thank you for praying, uh, Marcia. So today we're talking about how we view the world, world view. And it's the way we interpret and understand everything about us, everything around us. It's the glasses, so to speak, that we put on that basically inform everything, uh, how we think and how we act, how we feel. Our worldview affects the way we act and also how we treat others as well as our decisions. The biblical worldview that we are suggesting here today that we have embraced um, it is based on the fact of God's existence, uh, such as it is for us, uh, a fact, a reality, and that not only that God exists, but that God is good and that God is personal and that God interacts with you and with me. So God's existence. Uh, let's, let's talk about that. The Bible is, uh, definitely has a lot to say about that. There's this scripture from Psalm 53 and verse 1 where it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And so, uh, basically, there are two types of worldviews. The atheistic worldview, that says there is no God. The universe and everything in it just exists. There are no gods or other supernatural entities. Life has no purpose or meaning. It's We're just here. Um, and a lot more could be said about that. But that's just kind of to, to put it in a nutshell. Then there is the theistic worldview, and the theistic just comes is uh, from a, a Greek root, and it means God. the The worldview, the view that considers um, and assumes that God exists, the universe and everything in it were created by God. God exists and cares for His creation. We were created for a purpose to live with God forever. That's the theistic worldview. The Bible explains that God is a personal being and that loves us and inter interacts with us in his creation and that this god can do all things god is omnipotent god is omnipresent but that he also cares for each one of us and longs for our company and our well-being so here's the question for you do you believe in god and if so how do you know that god exists okay so let me uh, let me go to my friend Myron here today. Uh, Myron, would you speak on this? I'm going to tell you, and this is as if you had tuned in earlier. For those of you who were just tuning in, we were we they, it was mentioned that I had just lost my son this past Sunday. Um, I got a call at work that my son was dead and had been hit by a car. I don't remember too much after that. I remember being picked up off the floor. And next thing I know, I was at the scene. I got there in time enough to see 
my son's body laying on the side of the road, being covered in a bloody sheet. The gentleman who had hit my son was believed to have been drunk or drinking, and he was sitting off to the side, and he kept saying to the police, why are you holding me here? I didn't do anything. He walked out in front of my car. But if you looked at his truck, it looked like it had hit a lamppost. And from what the doctor, or from what I understood, from what the police were telling me, was that my son's, when he hit my son, it flipped him on top of the truck. He never slowed down. When he finally did, he ejected my son 30 yards in the air. Um, it's needless to say, I was torn up about it because my son and I had been a single parent with my son from the time he was just maybe a month old. And I was hurting very bad. That night I couldn't sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw his mangled body in that bloody sheet on the side of the road. I got up the next morning and I went out to my gym. And I'm sitting in my gym because my gym is detached from my house in a different garage. And all I wanted the night before and that day was for the pain to end. I had never experienced a pain like this in my life. And all I wanted was for it to be in, for it to be over. And let me go on to say that um, I've been clean from drugs and alcohol and everything for 10 years. Um, I, like I said, I never experienced anything like that in my life. And I'm sitting there. And, 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 and I'm thinking, how can I make this go away? I really don't want to go on. And a funny thing happened. I um, got a phone call. And at this point, I was sitting there thinking, you know, if I would just go and get me some cocaine and I get me some, some liquor, I could kill this pain. And if I did this coke and I, I got some antifreeze over there, I want you to, I want y'all to understand where my head was and how the devil can jump on you in situations like this. And I get this antifreeze and I lace it with this coke and I mix it up together. I'll be gone before anybody goes, and I won't have to worry about this pain no more. I can't deal with this. But a funny thing happened. The phone rang. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. I wanted out. The phone rang, and it was Gregory Miller and his wife, Deborah. Had it probably been anybody other than them, too, I probably wouldn't have answered my phone, but I did. And they were saying, and, and Deborah and Gregory Miller are two of the most unassuming people I ever met in my life. And um, I've never refused a call for them. They're in my Sabbath school class. And they asked me how I was doing and if it was anything that they could do. And we talked, I guess, for about 20 minutes or so. And as I was hanging up with them, Pastor Munoz called. And I'm talking to him. And before I could get off the phone with him, Pastor Johnson called. And while I'm talking to him, Sister Hammond sends me an emoji that says she's praying for me. 
And, 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 and this went on for four straight hours. The phone back the, over and over. And it was people calling and it was people I, I had worked with and they had been gone from the country for two, three, and four years. And somehow they heard and, and they called or they sent text messages. And I forgot about all of that that I was thinking that day. And I went in that evening and I laid down and I cried and I cried because the pain was still there. And I dozed off for maybe two hours and then I was back up because I couldn't sleep. And then the next day I went back out to the gym and I'm in there alone. And again, the phone starts ringing. And I look up and it's, I get out there about 1130. I look up and it's four in the afternoon. And it's been people calling all day. And, and, and the last conversation I had, I had had another conversation that day with Pastor Johnson. And he was telling me that it was okay to cry. And, that, and I was telling him, that I was angry with God. And he was saying that it's okay to be angry with God. It's okay, tell God how you're feeling. So when I got off the phone with him, I didn't just tell God how I was feeling. I lit into God because I was like, this is what I gave up everything for to lose my child in this tragic manner. You're God, you couldn't find a better way to take him, a more peaceful way to take him. And I was angry with God. And at that point, I really didn't want to have anything to do with God. But I, 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 I expressed myself. And then again, Sister Hammond sent me in another emoji. And then a couple other people called. And then for some reason, I just sat quiet. And something came to me and it said and it's strange because if you've ever been in my gym i'm you i'm an old dj nightclub dj so in my gym i have a system that totals like ten thousand watts and when that system is on you can't hear anything but for some reason this voice came to me Everything was quiet, and, and and I didn't hear the speakers, and I didn't hear anything. And, 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 and this voice said to me, you are not alone. And I don't know how, over those 10,000 watts, that I, it tuned everything out. And it said, you are not alone. And then I sat quiet again that afternoon and I asked God why. And in, my, in a dream that night, he told me, I needed you to experience this so that you would fully understand. Because for in order for you to do the work that I have for you to do, I needed you to fully understand my pain in losing my son for your sake. And I walked out knowing that God had me. Wow. And it's probably the most, one of the most wonderful feelings. And I was at peace. And I was able at that point to come to grips with my son's death. Mm. Because I said, if the, 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 the love point of love that I got from the, the, the church and my Sabbath school class because they called and I've always said to my class, we aren't 
a class. We are family. And we have a saying in my class, once you're in the family, there's only one way out. And I thank them. And I thank the church so much. Mm. Myron, thank you for sharing. So uh, just so from your heart and talk about uh, getting a, uh, a real taste of, uh, of uh, experiencing that God exists. And you know that God exists. Before, what I hear from your story, when you are able to be angry, uh, because you've never been angry at, at someone that, that was not real. And so thank you so much for sharing, my friend. Uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to, uh, to hearing uh, Marcia share as well. On this well, question. Pastor, I don't have anything as powerful or remote, remotely profound as what our brother just shared. But just childlike faith, um, going back to what they taught me as a child, because the Bible tells me so, right? That God is real. And because I too have experienced God in my life, I know um, as someone who has struggled with depression and sometimes suicidal ideation, that I'm only here because of the grace of God. I'm only here because God exists. I'm only here when, because there were times when I too did not want to go on, but he had a plan for me and he kept me going on. So that's how I know that God exists. Mm. Wow. Thank you for sharing, Marcia. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, let me get some of the comments that are coming in um, uh, here. Uh, let's see some comments. I see one here from Dorothy. She said, blessings, uh, Myron, all oh, and Myron. I feel your pain. I too lost my daughter two years ago on October 21st. Mm. So that's real fresh. Uh, I remember I was there at the funeral with you, Dorothy. Uh, yeah, the pain doesn't go away. Uh, God is with me and he will be there for you. Continuing to pray for you and your mom uh, and, uh, and the family. All right. Uh, so... Uh, a lot of wonderful comments here. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. And uh, I lost my spot where I had where I was uh, picking the comments from, and I can't <laughs> pick them all. Um, but uh, but let's uh, pick on this one right here, where it says, "Amen, my sister. Amen." Very good. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Um, I can see that we're not going to be able to cover everything today, but. But we're talking today about how do we view the world and uh, how do we prepare for, for a tragedy. So you've heard here today from two people so far, one uh, who recently lost a, uh, his, his junior, Myron Jr., 37 years old. Um, the devastation is unthinkable. Uh, I'm thinking of, of someone that I, I remember uh, that had a tragedy in the family who, and that was some 30, 40 years ago. And uh, to this day, they, they, um, they find no meaning in life. And, and they, um, they can't see uh, how God has been with them. So a biblical worldview includes the belief that we are in a cosmic struggle, that there is a real battle, that evil is not a joke, and that God's people can be harmed, and that the person that you pray for are not always healed, but that God will ultimately bring about healing and restoration and remove the pain and the, and the sickness and the sadness one day and so then i can get up another day myron gets up another day marcia gets up another day and says today god is with me and come what may today god is with me that's a biblical world view that's how we can embrace the promise that no trial is too great or too difficult that we can't deal with for god is with us if we don't have that then what do we have but if we have that, then we can think, 
what if God is for me? What if even all the pain in my life in the end is going to turn out okay and for God's glory? And that at the end, when everything is said and done, I look back at my life and maybe the most difficult parts of my life and be thankful. Now, that's a crazy idea, but that's a biblical worldview to deal with, with pain, loss, tragedy, sickness in our lives and in the lives of our family. Okay, uh, so we were talking about creation uh, this week and um, accepting what the Bible teaches. That's what a lot of us are doing. Uh, who have a theistic worldview, who have embraced that God is for real. It's not a story. It's, it's for real, for God lives within our hearts. And uh, the way we interpret our environment depends on our worldview. So, for example, a rainbow is just a physical phenomenon for an atheist. Oh, it's, and you can explain how it forms. But for a believer, it is more than that. You see the rainbow, and it is filled with God's promise, God's promise of salvation. The biblical worldview includes a series of doctrines that teach us how to live, how to make moral decisions, and so how to treat our neighbor, how to interpret the world around us, what to expect from the future. Therefore, Christian education, both formal education whether it's in an elementary, high school, or college uh, campus, uh, must be based on the Bible if it is going to be a Christian education. And so uh, I have a question for you. We can share on this. And let me put it on the screen for us. And that question is, share the Bible teaching that has been the most helpful to you and so i'm gonna put it on the screen go ahead and share in the chat with us share the bible teaching that has been most helpful in your life and why and let me bring marcy to share with us her story on that <laughs> so romans 5 20 right and it talks about the story of grace where sin abounds grace much more abounds and i'm telling you grace god's grace I am so grateful for grace because even sometimes when we think we are at our best, in God's sight, we are not at our best. Um, and even when we want to be at our best, we stumble and we fall. And as you struggle and you grapple and you 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 really want to be who God wants you to be, but all our worldview, how we see ourselves, how we think the world sees us can cripple us in our walk with God. But I'm so grateful, Pastor, for the story of grace that as a sinner, grace is sufficient for me. Oh, praise the <laughs> Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God for grace. <laughs> Amen. Helene wrote, God exists in my life as a safe place. God is your safe yes. place. For me too, my sister. Thank you for sharing. He's the so place much. of peace. He's the place. He, he's the place. He's the he's the only place. The hiding place. The best place. Thank God for his love and his mercies towards us. Oh, amen. I feel the joy in your voice as you share that. <laughs> Let's see. I thank you so much. All right. If you were following along with us, then there was a section also in our study for this week about uh, the law of God, the Ten Commandments. And one of the scriptures uh, comes from uh, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. And uh, Myron, would you read it for us? Uh, it's right there on the screen, uh, okay. Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Amen. And so uh, on this question, I have a question for, for everyone. And the question is, would you share, share with us, which of the Ten Commandments is your favorite and why? And Maren, do you want to start on that one? Yes, I'll start with that one. Uh, 
if you ask me that question probably from week to week, it would be a different one. Um, but I will say that uh, for right now, it would be love thy neighbor as thyself. And uh, I'll tell you something that happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I was on my way to work. And usually I work out in my gym before I go to work and I'll get there in time enough to eat. Well, this particular day I, got, I get there and I get to the corner where my job is and I see this lady. She's on the side of the road. She's got four small kids with her, the youngest one probably being about six or seven. And she's got a sign that says she's homeless and hungry. And if uh, that anything given would be appreciated. Well, I'm in my truck. I turned the corner. I said, well, if I stop to help her, I'm not going to have enough time to sit down and eat. And then I'm going to be, I'm going to be rushing to get to the floor to get to work. I said, I'll tell you what I do. I, 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 in my mind, I told myself I would go back out on my first break and then I would see, see about her. Well, I, I, I parked the truck. I went in. I ate. I reported to work. And then on my first break, I went back out there and she was gone. And that stayed with me all night long. And finally, I hit my knees and I prayed to God. I said, God, I know there was some reason you were pulling me that way. And I said, if I ever have the opportunity again, if you would just give me the opportunity again to do something for this lady, or if I see her again, I promise that I'll do right. Because what bothered me the most was that at one point in my life, I was homeless and living on the street for two years, but I got too well. See, sometimes as Christians, we get too well and we forget where we came from and, and, and those things. And, and I prayed and I prayed because it stayed on my mind. And I looked for that lady all that week and I never saw again. So finally, uh, last week, I'm going to work. I'm not even thinking about it. And there she is. And this time I am running late for work. But I said, well, I'm going to do it. I didn't guess God has control of time. I'm going to help this lady. I parked my car, walked back up the street, and I talked to her for a minute. And of course, you know, the devil, he jumped in. Well, you know, this could be a scam. This could be yada yada. So the lady, she gives me her name. and. She tells me that she's trying to get a room over in this hotel. It's not far from my job. And and and, and um, if I don't believe her, just go there. It's going to be this room 112. She's trying to pay for it. And so I go down to the hotel and I pay for the room. And I get the receipt and I take it back to the lady. And this kid, one of the children runs up, I mean, he's probably about four. And she, he says, mommy, um, are we gonna have a room tonight? And she says, yes. And she asks me my name and I tell her it's Myron. She said, Mr. Myron just paid for a room for us to be in tonight. And to touch the child, he starts to do this little dance. And in my mind, I'm imagining the dance that David did when, b before God. And, and um, he was so happy. And I said, you can't fake that with a child. So I knew it was genuine. And I looked in my wallet and I had a $20 bill. And, and, and I took that 20 and I gave that to her. And I said, I said, uh, Take them to McDonald's and get something off the dollar menu for them. I know all kids love McDonald's. I gave her what I had, but I can't tell you the joy that came from deep within me with me being able to do that. And then I sat down and I relaxed and I lit a sigh and I said, you know, this feels better than sex. <laughs> that is an honest, honest uh, share right there for us. Thank you so much, my brother. 
uh, appreciate you. Uh, Victoria here wrote, uh, for me, it's Matthew chapter 25, the whole chapter, especially verses 25 to 41. Um, and uh, speaking of the, of the commandments of God, you know, summarizing commandment number 5 through 10, uh, Jesus said, that's how, that's how we live our lives, loving, loving people. Thank you, everybody, for your wonderful comments. Um, I, see, uh, I see your comments coming in and people saying hallelujah. And uh, so here's, a, here's another one. John 3.16 is one of my favorite verses, wrote Dwight Palmer. This, to me, was the ultimate example. Christ showed the world, which teaches me, Dwight, that there is a God and He is real. All right, friends. Um, thank you for that. We're going to close today with a brief conversation on the plan of salvation. And so... Let me put a scripture on the screen for us here. And um, let's see, Marcia, would you read it for us? Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Romans 3, 24. Mm, thank you. And so God didn't just discard His creation when humans messed up. Just like He hasn't discarded you just because you made that mistake over and over again. God had created a redeeming plan. The Creator would die to save His creation. John 1, verses 1 through 4, Mark 10, verse 45. So we are called to share this everlasting gospel with others. This gospel is closely related to creation, as we see in Revelation 14, 6 and 7. So God's plan of redemption was conceived before creation, it includes the death and resurrection of Jesus and the blessed hope of His second coming. So we have a question that we'd like to, uh, for you to consider and share your answer in the chat. So how do you know, or can you know, or do you know that you have been saved? And uh, let's start with you, Marcia, on this one. <laughs> so... Um being saved we all struggle with this question don't we because there are times we feel as if we're saved and there are times we may not feel as if we're saved but it's not just about feeling it's about knowing i too like paul would define myself as chief of sinners but i rely on god's grace and i rely on his word to keep me going when my feeling says you are not saved. God cannot save you. That is denying God his power to save. And so I cannot do that and believe in God. He says that he is able to save even the chief of, of sinners, which I am. And so that's how I know I'm saved. Day by day, moment by moment, walking with God. And uh, by the way, I my, my login into my computer is chief of sinners that's my password uh said that do it in spanish so that my kids will get into my computer <laughs> but uh so uh, that is so important to know that it's it's not anything of the doing of the person but it has to be god mara do you want to speak on this uh, do we have time <laughs> I, I think maybe it, maybe about two minutes. Give us the short your short short version on, on on your take on this. Okay, I've always felt that that question was a loaded question and a dangerous question because you get those who say that I am saved, but we and and just to try to make it quick, um, you're saved by uh, by uh, faith through grace and. Faith is the the the, the, mu the muscle that fuels our redemption. Um, and when you think in terms of muscles, you have to think about that the, the more you, you exercise a muscle, the stronger it gets. And your faith reacts the same way. Now, if your walk with God, if, if you're the type that goes to church, goes home, sits down, waits for the sun to go down and doesn't do anything. If people can't see God in your life, or if you're not out there actively trying to save souls, then chances are 
you, you aren't saved. Um, I've always felt there was a loaded question because and dangerous because you have those that feel that once saved, always saved. And that's not true because again, we're saved by, by faith through grace. And what does God tell you about faith? He tells you faith without works is dead. So I'll end, end it right there so that we don't run over. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for sharing, Myron. Really appreciate that. Let me bring in a couple of the comments uh, that we have here. And so Brother Thomas wrote, we have to claim the promises of the Bible. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's verse John chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh, praise God. Uh, Victoria wrote, uh, having the strength to turn from temptation. Sometimes it takes all strength, but God restores it. Um, all right. I uh, see uh, Gabe Baptiste, uh, well, rather Joyce just said, Amen. Brother Myron. And then Gabe Baptiste wrote, I know I am saved because Jesus holds my hand and will not let me go unless I pull away from him. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, getting more comments here coming in on this question. Um, I am saved because God never forsakes his promises, wrote Helene Butamik. The inner joy that God has bestowed within me has cultivated victory. Praise God. One of my favorite scriptures is uh, 1 John 5 and verse 3. These things I write to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Um, it's not that we can turn away from it, for God never removes our freedom of choice. All right, comments just keep coming in. Another one here. I know I am saved because I believe and accept God's promises to save to the uttermost them that call upon Him. It is faith and trust relationship that God keeps His promises. Thank you, Yvonne, for that. Um, praise God, praise God. Just uh, what a wonderful, robust conversation we've had here today. And so, uh, to close, my friends, I'm so glad you tuned in. Yes, I am so grateful that I was blessed uh, and I continue to be blessed to put on a view, to put on a set of glasses that are not based on what I think, are not based on what I feel, but that are based on the revelation that God has given to us through His Word, through Jesus Christ. So that when I see myself, it's someone someone uh, said this, it's always impacted me. When I look at myself, like Marcia said today, I see the chief of sinners. I look at my life, I think about myself, and I wonder, how could I ever be saved? But then I look up, and I look to God, and I wonder, how could I ever be lost? That's a biblical worldview. That's a theistic worldview. That is looking at life of myself and the world from God's perspective. And that, uh, to close today, I'm going to, play the song Make Me a Blessing that the Jarrett's put together for a week of prayer a few weeks a few weeks ago. And so uh, just I love this song and it we, we are made a blessing um, because we have embraced that God has blessed us and has the purpose to make us a blessing. Friends, uh, we're closing with that. Uh, we're running out of time here. So uh, refresh your browser. Later today, congratulations to the Pathfinders that are getting inducted at the parking lot at 8900 Good Luck Road, keeping social distancing, bringing our masks to celebrate uh, that uh, special accomplishment and to celebrate our young people. So we'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes with our worship service. Um, so if you want to watch it live, if you're watching this afterwards, it's recorded there for you. But God bless you. And let me then put the song on the screen and then uh, and you can if you know the song feel free to sing along and uh, and enjoy this time with the lord